hello hello welcome back to another video my name is Gemma and today I am going to be trying to smush together some sort of August TBR so if you're new I do usually have like four buckets of like categories that I choose for my TBR each month uh I'm, I'm scrapping that this month uh but just so you're aware last month went badly so <laughs> my gold book was Matrix by Lauren Groff did not read that. My book for the Canada, Read Around Canada challenge was The Town That Drowned by Real Mason. Uh, didn't read that. My book of the series was The Argument of Kings by Joe Abercrombie. Did not read that. And my Alice and Agatha challenge has just um, like completely gone off the rails and I haven't read any Agatha Christie since like March. <laughs> so, that went bad. However, my intimidating read was Shantran by, what's his name? David Gregory something? Gregory David? I don't know. Hopefully you can see it here. Um, and I have started that, uh, but it's a really long book. Uh, so I am about a third of the way through it um, and I'm really enjoying it, but that's, that's all I've read. So, well, that's not all I've read, obviously, but that's all I've read from the TBR from last month. So, so we're going to ignore July. July was slumpy in the same way that June was slumpy. I do feel like I'm starting to get some mojo back now, but not a lot. Uh, but we're just gonna we're just gonna roll with it. So, yeah. So there are two events that I want to take part in in August. One quite significantly, and one I'm going to be honest is token effort. Uh, so the big one is Women in Translation Month. There is usually a like a readathon for this, but I haven't seen any announcement. But I'm just going to read Women in Translation anyway. <laughs> uh, so there's that. Oh wait, there's three things. Um, the second thing is Garb August. So I might do a token, a token read for that. I'll tell you about that in a bit. The other one is the World Cup readathon, the Women's World Cup readathon. So I'm going to start there. So for the World Cup Readathon, uh, I was chosen, allocated, um, Vietnam as my country. And so the book that I chose in last month's TBR, I think, for that was The Mountain Sing by Nguyen Phan Ki May. Uh, I have started this. Uh, that's why it no longer has a dust jacket on, that is upstairs. Uh, I'm only 70 pages in. Um, so I've still got quite a way to go. Hold it up like this makes any difference to you. Uh, maybe I'll just get a picture. <laughs> but I have to say, 70 pages in, this has potential to be one of my best books of the year. I am adoring it. So that was my book for a Vietnamese author. So apparently the football team aren't as good as the writers in Vietnam and <laughs> they're not doing very well in their group. So I think they've lost all of their games. I think they've still got, have they still got Netherlands to play? Or they might have already lost against them, I'm not sure. Anyway. They definitely lost against the USA. And so the book that I'm gonna read for that is uh, Daisy Miller by Henry James. Uh, so this is a bind up of two of Henry James's short stories. Daisy Miller is super short, it's like 60 odd pages. So I'm hoping to read that for the American book. Um, they have also lost to Portugal. And this ties in quite nicely because I can tie this into my Women in Translation TBR. And I've found a book. It's a collection of short stories by Portuguese female authors. Uh, I think it's called The Six or something like that. I'll put a picture here. Uh, it's on script. So I will read one of the short stories out of there. I might continue with that, pick it up as and when uh, as we go. But that will work as my Portuguese book. If they haven't already lost to the Netherlands, um, then I have The Discomfort of Evening by Marieke Lucas Richneveld. I'm not sure if that's correct. Uh, and this is translated by Michelle Hutchinson. Hutchison. So this would work for, again, Women in Translation and World Cup Readathon. So that's also going on in this. I have a feeling I'm not going to like this. <laughs> I picked it up because it won the International Booker in 2020. Um, but I've heard really mixed things about it, so we'll see. But I mean, even if I start it in DNF, it still counts, right? So that's what we're going with. 
what else is on the TBR? So the FOMO Book Club pick for July and August. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, the FOMO Book Club is a book club that I run with Alice from Alice and Joy Bookshelf and Jack at Spread Book Joy. We have one book every two months uh, and then we discuss it on a live at the end of that period. So for July and August, we're reading The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller and we will be discussing that on my channel at the end of August. And I have started it, I'm about 15% of the way through. Uh, so yeah, if you'd like to join in, there's still the whole of August to read that and um, yeah, we'll, I'll let you know when we know what date and time the live will be. So that is going on. Other book clubs. So I do run a book club at work um, and I'm in charge of it. So I also picked Women in Translation for the book club and the book club chose The Elegance of the Hedgehog by Muriel Barbary. Uh, and translated by Alison Anderson. And I don't know much about this, it's about a concierge in Paris, one of the people in her building die and it changes things, but it's super popular. It comes up on like all of the women in translation lists and I've never read it. And I just love the fact that it has a hedgehog in the title, if I'm honest. So yes, so we'll see what this one is like, but I will definitely be reading that for my work book club. The other book club that I might join in with, time dependent, is the Blind Eye Book Club, which is hosted by Kim at Middle of the Book March. And they are reading Daughter of Fortune by Isabel Allende. Also another work in translation by a woman who's the translator, translated by Margaret Sayers Payden. I don't know too much about this. I think it's about a girl who sort of gets adopted into a new family. Yeah, about a foundling found on the doorstep of a British import and export company um, and what happens to her from there. So yeah, I read The Letter by a and a last year and adored it. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to getting to more of her work. The pile is already looking quite large. <laughs> um, another one that I am buddy reading, which also works for women in translation, but I don't have the physical copy yet. I did order it like two weeks ago and it's just taking forever to get here, is I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Harpman, translated by Roz Schwartz. I am probably reading that with the lovely Jess from Stalking Kafka and Alice from Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. And I'm super excited for this one. It's about like a, like a commune of women almost that are like underground, they've never met men. It's supposed to be like one of the best dystopians like going. And it was also Emily Fox's best book of the year, so far this year. Uh, and she's read it in both English and French. She's a French Canadian booktuber. So yeah, I'm really, really excited to get to it. I think it's gonna be epic. So yes. So I've got quite a few for Women in Translation, potentially. These three plus I Have Never Known, I Have Never Known Men. But it wouldn't be me if I didn't create a really unrealistic TBR. So what else is going on? So I have two other buddy reads. One is The Book of Night Women by Marlon James, which I'm reading the lovely Jolene at Auckland Adventure Girl. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't really know too much about this. Marlon James is a Jamaican author that I've been meaning to get to for a long, long time. And I've heard really good things about both this and his other book, uh, A Brief History of Seven Killings. Um, so yeah, both of those, actually I think like everything is written is on my TBR. So yeah. But me and Jolene are going to read that one. I'm really, really excited to get to it and see what it's all about. It sounds pretty dark just from the title, so excellent. And then I am also buddy reading the entire Dark is Rising series by Susan Cooper with Alice and Jack. That's five books. This is 100% Alice's fault. So this is one of Alice's favourite series. Um, it's a fantasy series, I think it's middle grade or YA, and Alice has been raving about it, like, since she started her channel, and she's really angry that, like, not more people have read it. <laughs> I had never heard of it before Alice started talking about it. So we decided, yes, we would read it together, and then we decided, actually, you know what, we're going to binge all five books in August, which may have been a slight error, given the situation, 
but we're going to give it a go. Uh, the first book I think is called Under Sea Over Stone. Over Over Sea Under Stone. There's definitely a sea and a stone, and you go over one of them and under the other one. That's all I know. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward to getting into that series with the girls, and we'll uh, I will report back if it's any good. If Alice has good taste. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm really joking. Alice has great taste. So that's that. <laughs> you know when you like put a TBR together and you think that's not that bad, and then as you're talking through it, you're like, actually, that's completely unrealistic. Uh, anyway, other books, other books. So I did want to try and squeeze a gold book on. Of course I did. Um, and so I'd really like to get to Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. I just feel like some cosy fantasy. I feel like that's what I'm in the mood for. So I'm going to try and get to this as well. <laughs> God, Gemma, you're a ridiculous human. Um, so that's that. I did mention Garb August. So if you have been with me for a while, you will know that last Garb August I read Ice Planet Barbarians, which is about sexy blue ice alien sex so i would count that as garbage right this, to be honest anything smutty in my mind is trash um that is not like any sort of insult to someone who likes smart i mean fill your beats you know um <laughs> but it's just not it's not really my go-to genre but i feel like I feel like I should try and do Garb August a little bit again. So I might read the next in the Ice Planet Barbarians series, which I think is just called Ice Barbarians. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see if I prioritise that, won't we? Oh, and sorry, Garb August is organised by the lovely Criminoli. And I don't think I mentioned, but the World Cup readathon is hosted by Mark at Book Time of Elvis. So I'll leave all the details for all of these readathons linked below for you to check out. So at this point, I then just picked a load more books by women in translation off my shelf that I wanted to read that tickled my pickle, if you will. <laughs> so I bought this super recently, uh, 19 Claws and a Blackbird by Agostina Bastrika, uh, translated by Sarah Moses. So Tender in the Flesh, by Agostina Bastarica is one of my absolute favourite books. It's awesome, awesome. Uh, so when I saw that she was having a short story collection translated into English, this is only her second book to be translated into English, uh, I couldn't resist. Unfortunately, <laughs> Scott over at Gunpowder Fiction, gun, gun, mm, gun Powder Fiction and Plot uh, read this last month, recently, the other day. Uh, and he didn't vibe with it. Um, I'm hoping that he's just wrong. Occasionally he is. Uh, so I will be very much trying to read this. I might vlog it and let you know which stories are worth reading. There's, oh, there's quite a few in here. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna count them, but it looks like there's about 15, 20 stories. So yeah, really looking forward to cheaper seats to that. Um, then other books uh, by women that are translated that I'd really like to read. The Barefoot Woman by uh, Scholastic Makasanga, translated by Jordan Stomp, Stump. And this is a non-fiction account of uh, Makasanga's experience during the Rwandan genocide. Uh, so it sounds really, really um, quite a difficult read, but I don't know much about that period of history um, or, that, or Rwanda in general, really. So I would really like to get to that. Then we have Cassandra by Crystal Wolf. Uh, this is translated from the German by Jan van Heer. And I don't, I picked this up because I do really fancy it, but I'm reading The Song of Achilles at the moment. So I don't know if I want, so I don't know if I want two like Iliad retellings in a month, but we will see. So for those that don't know, Cassandra is one of the daughters of King Priam of Troy. She um, has the ability to predict the future, but she is also cursed that no one will ever believe anything that she says. Uh, so super interesting character in mythology. So I do want to read it, but as I say, I am reading The Song of Achilles at the moment, which is from the perspective of Patroclus. And yeah, I mean, they're on different sides. I mean, I don't think Cassandra and Patroclus ever meet. 
So it is very, there are very different stories within the Battle of Troy, but I just, I just don't know if I want that much Greek, but maybe I will want that much Greek. I don't know. We shall see. And then the final one is The Employees, a Workplace Novel of the 22nd Century um, by Olga Raven, translated from the Danish by Martin Aitken. Um, and this takes place on a spaceship. And I think it's told in like, uh, uh, statements. Yeah, so like, I think people are being interviewed and uh, yeah. I don't know a whole lot more about it. I know bits and pieces, but probably not enough to give you like a solid synopsis. However, this was Jane Campbell's book of the year so far. So that says that it's definitely worth a read. This was shortlisted for the booker in 2021 uh, and I've been meaning to get to it ever since. Clearly, I bought it, it's on my shelf, I'm holding it up right now. Uh, so that is also a potential. I do also have a book on audio by a woman in translation that I'd quite like to get to and that is The Girl That Wrote Loneliness by Kyung Suk Shin, translated by Ha Yan Jung, um, about a girl, sort of, I think it's supposed to be like auto fiction about a girl in the 70s sort of growing up in the sweatshops of Korea, is it Korea? I think it's Korea, yeah, Seoul, 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 is that how you pronounce it? And what it's like growing up there and trying to become a writer within that economy. Um, so yeah, I've heard really, really good things about that. So I would like to get to that. Honestly, there's so many books in translation that I want to get to. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there because realistically, this just ain't going to happen, is it? Also, like there might be more for the Women's World Cup if none of the ones that I've read go through. So, yes. So that's everything that I'm reading. It's quite a lot. It's quite ridiculous, isn't it? Um, I ain't gonna get to all of that, but we'll see how it goes. And uh, yeah, I'd love to know what your plans are. Are you doing Women in Translation or Garb August or the Women's Cup for a readathon? I would love to know. And I will see you all very soon with another one. Bye guys.